Yes, thank you. Um, um, the, the study that I, I'm referring to is a recent study over the last couple of weeks or so that was, was released that claimed that the insurance uh, companies are using blatant dis, uh, discrimination um, and redlining black neighborhoods, targeting black people, charging them from uh, 18 to 33 percent more than whites for the same insurance. The study uh, found that black insurers, when they uh, filed their uh, claims, uh, their insurance went up while white people who filed claims, they went down or either stayed the same. Um, the two women who conducted these uh, research say they used the same data and uh, in investigative techniques that the insurance companies use, and they used a, a woman of age 30, uh, one black and one white, and um, of course when the insurance companies uh, are trying to do damage control, they dispute the finding, citing that the researchers didn't use uh, some missing kind of particular factor. So the researchers went back and added the, quote, missing factors to the data research and found that the statistics were even higher than they had first found. Yeah. And the biggest offenders, um, I won't use their name, but I'll use their slogan. Um, one of the slogans, the biggest offenders, were the uh, lizards, the, the gecko lizards, and I guess the other uh, insurance company was the company that claims that they're on our side, but apparently if you're not white, then they're not on your side. Uh, I think I'm familiar with this report. I think they also said they were giving them packages and premiums that they know they could not make. So they would make money and then know that they would, a large percentage of them would default where the company was just making money turning over predatory insurance scams. Yes, yes. Well, just, I just wanted to say that so that uh, you and your listeners can make a more in, uh, informed decision about insurance. And I wanted to see if you could add it to your convention topic of discussion. Um, you know, I know that you're going to have a, a attending uh, attorneys uh, that can uh, attack this yeah. blatant uh, that, that should be in our, Yeah, I'm going to raise that in, uh, with the lawyers to put in the legal as well as in the health uh, uh, workshop. That's a very important point. Thank you, Robbie. Let me go exactly. to Virginia. Let me go to Virginia to XM 126 to Diana. Diana, you're keeping it real with Al Sharpton. Hi, Reverend Sharpton. I'd like to know if you're aware that in 04, uh, Romney and the Bang Corporation and some other very wealthy individuals under George Bush tax cuts bought up practically all of the health care, not just in America, but abroad. And no. Who, who who did who did who bought this? Romney, Bain okay. Capital, and O okay. four under the George Bush tax cut, they bought up a lot of the health care in America and abroad. So if you look into that, <laughs> that now he bought it under lot. the auspices of Bain Capital, which he owned, which he was the right. head of. Okay. Also, very shocked and I live in a very rural area. And I've never seen so many banks, and people make minimum wage <laughs> predominantly. And uh, banks, so many banks are going up, and it just gets you to wondering uh, if people are making minimum wage, why are all these banks in these areas, Lynchburg for one? I mean, it's like two banks per, per, <laughs> per block almost. Is that right? Oh, yeah, it's a lot of banks. And also, Reverend Sharpton, um, I, I wanted to know if you were aware that, uh, well, I'll, I'll wait till another time to tell you that. I don't want to put too much on the table. All right, but I got some you. shady stuff going on here in Virginia. Now, I'll leave it at that. All right, thank you All for right, your call. You. Very. You, you put some stuff on us, though, I, uh, this banking thing. You're right. If you're dealing in minimum wage areas and rural areas where the income is clearly stymied, then why these influx of banks? Interesting. Milwaukee, WNOV 860. Let's go and talk to Brian. Brian, you're keeping it real with Al Shopton. Thank you, Reverend Al. Thank you for taking my call. Just got done doing my taxes, and I'm feeling quite taxed without representation. <laughs> yeah. you, yes, you know, those, 
those missiles that they sent over there to uh, Syria, they were like a million dollars a pop. And come to find out, Raytheon made the missiles. And on top of that, our dear president, uh, he has stock uh, holdings in uh, Raytheon. So I'm gonna be doing some more research in regard to this mother of all bombs. I'm wondering, did uh, Raytheon make that bomb or how much money? You know, the war makers made off of uh, blowing that big hole in Afghanistan. You know, you, you know what, one of the things that you raised, I'm not going to uh, cut you off, I'm going to let you finish, uh -huh. but one of the things that you raised when you raised Raytheon in there that I want our listeners to understand, when they drop a so-called mother of all bombs, uh, they also then can go back in and get more money to recreate the bombs that they dropped and the... Uh, the nuclear research and all of that. So there is money in this. If you never use the equipment, it is uh, one amount. But if you use it, well, we've got to replace and we've got to perfect and we've got to improve. And that's lots and lots and lots of money. And the question yeah. is toward what end? What are we doing dropping these bombs? And how are we securing the United States? And with the air raid, the airport was back up in an hour in Syria. So what was the point? But we spent a lot of money making yeah. uh, a non-point, or at least making a non-point in terms of the United States. Maybe it was a political point or an optical point for the president and the military. Right, and of course we've been bombing uh, Syria for a while, meaning the U.S., uh, but uh, this certainly made the news, and of course it was a violation of international law and so I'm still waiting on my Congress to step up and step forward and begin articles of impeachment on a whole number of counts. You know, not only now about the lying of uh, the gas in Syria, you know, everything he says is a lie, but his Russian connection, his Raytheon com co uh, connection, so there's all kinds of uh, conflicts of interest. You know, Reverend, that uh, Tillerson himself is a big Exxon uh, oil man, and I'm, yeah. I'm sure they're using Exxon gas to uh, have these ships go all over the Pacific and all over the Mediterranean. And our CIA director Pompeo, he said he he made his millions of uh, selling oil rigs and oil equipment and oil crap to the oil uh, ma magnets. So so we're in real deep trouble. The, the good news is, you know, locally. You know, people can move to have their common counsel, issue articles of impeachment. We're marching to...